Creative Chats Podcast with Mike Brennan. Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Creative Chats. I am your host, Mike Brennan, and this is the podcast where we talk about creativity, the creative process, and story. And I love to unpack these things mostly with my guests and explore how we can apply these things to our own creative processes and journeys. Hey friends, I have a special episode this time around. I am celebrating and I want you to celebrate along with me. I have reached a milestone and it is 12 years of my daily creative habit. That's right, every single day for the past 12 years, I have shown up to create something, mostly visual art, but I've also branched out into writing as well. And so this journey of mine, if you're not familiar with me, with Daily Creative Habit, my background and story, briefly, I was in a place where I put my creativity on a shelf for about 10 years. I had experienced some burnout. I had kind of fallen out of love with some graphic design and some um, just of those creative abilities. I was stuck in this pace that was very relentless. And this is what I was doing for a living. And so I put my creativity on a shelf. I walked away because I said, this is not working. And I didn't realize that by not creating anything, even in my personal life, that it would eventually lead to a place of depression and a place where, along with some other life experiences and circumstances, had my life spinning out of control and really hitting rock bottom. And it was at that place, rock bottom, suffering from depression, suffering loss after loss, where I heard this voice inside me saying, what if you came back to your creativity? Because when you were a kid, you just loved to create. You'd create a greeting card. You'd give it to family members. You'd see their faces light up. Like, what if you could get back to that place of creating where there was actually joy in the process? Like, you enjoyed making things. And it wasn't so heavy. It wasn't so much about clients. It wasn't so much about opportunities and making a living from it. And what if you could just return to a place where you created and it made you happy? And maybe you gave it away and it made some people around you happy. Is that even possible? And I was honest with myself saying, I don't even know. I mean, I've been away from my art for so long. I've been away from my creativity for so long. I'm not sure how to engage with it. And I don't know what that would look like. But I thought to myself, you know, I really don't have anything else to lose at this point. And I got turned on to this idea of a 365 day art making journey, which was basically show up every day and create some piece of art. And I thought to myself, this might be failure. This might not work. I haven't shown up for the past 10 years. What makes me think that I can show up for every single day of this next year? But again, I thought, what do I have to lose? Try something. I need some kind of framework, some kind of process, some kind of guidance to help me engage with this part of me that I'm wondering if I can even resurrect it or get back in touch with it. And so I decided to do this and I finished a year and made a lot of bad work and uncovered a few things about myself and some of my interests and I kept going and I kept going. And that's where daily creative habit came from. The process that I now teach, it came from my journey of showing up every single day, engaging with creativity. And I found my voice and my style as, as, a, as an illustrator. Uh, I found out what I liked to do, what I didn't like to do. I had more ownership over my creative journey and over myself, honestly. There was health in life that returned back to me. And it was this sense of this is leading someplace. I need to keep on this journey. And so every year I complete a new, another year of my daily creative habit. And then I ask the question of, Am I going to continue? And so far every year it's been yes. And so I just completed my 12th year of showing up every single day and creating something. 
And so that's over 4,380 pieces because honestly, there were many days where I did more than one piece. And so it it's probably not double that, but it's probably close to somewhere around six or 7,000 pieces. And I started with zero. I started with nothing. I started with depression. And so how did I become so prolific in this process and how did I achieve the ability to do so much of this work every single day, not missing a day, even on holidays, even when I was sick, even when I didn't feel like showing up to do things. Well, I want to share with you something that's kind of the secret sauce behind this process, behind me in this journey, because this journey is not just about me. This is actually about you. This is about you and your creativity. This is about you engaging with your creativity in such a way that you get to a deeper level, that you start producing more and more work, that you start executing more and more ideas, and you have less time in between when you actually sit down to do something and when you've had that idea. You have less time spent wishing that you could do something creative, but feeling the weight of practical things and not knowing how to manage perhaps time and priorities. It was, you know, a nice to do kind of thing. I wish I could do kind of thing that gets turned into a, I'm going to do this. This is part of my daily rhythm, my routine, my habit. That's why it's a daily creative habit. So I want to share with you a couple of these secret sauces so that you can start to get some traction as well. Uh, secret sauce number one is changing limited beliefs. This was a big one right out of the gate because I had to ask myself, I'm thinking about re-engaging with my creativity. I'm thinking about doing something as opposed to nothing. Is it even possible? And thinking, have I outgrown my creativity? Have I gotten to a place in life where it will never have a space in my life again? It will never have a, a place for me to work things out creatively. Uh, I was wondering, did I, was I missing something? Um, because other people around me seem to be creating all sorts of great things. And I had to confront a lot of these limiting beliefs. And, and it was like, no, actually, um, you know, we all have the same amount of time. And what we do with it is up to us. Um, we can't start from a place of like, look, not being able to do this. If we start from a place of saying we can't, then we're going to be this self-fulfilling prophecy. We will prove ourselves to be right every single time. But we need to open ourselves up. We need to examine what are the places where those limiting beliefs have, have come in. What are those beliefs that we need to expose and change? Bring them out into the light. Um, you know, I thought early on that I couldn't be a, quote, real artist. You know, I was a designer. I went to art school for graphic design. I worked in the field. I still do graphic design. But... I thought to myself, well, I could be a designer, I can work with fonts, I can work with color palettes and, and all that layouts, but to be a quote, real artist, you know, you have to do this photorealistic style and you have to have perfect proportions uh, all the time on the people that you draw and it has to come naturally and easily because these are some of the things that I saw around me and they were lies that I believed. Now, I knew that there were certainly artists who would do things that were um, abstract or representative, um, you know, not necessarily a, a photorealistic style, um, you know, cartoon style even. I mean, other things that, that I could have easily gravitated towards, but for whatever reason, and I think some of this was in art school, we were taught that things had to look a certain way and we were trying to achieve a certain technique. And I struggled with that in those classes that I took and therefore told myself, I'm not, quote, a real artist. And so I had to work through that and I had to expose those lies and I had to lean into my mess because instead of trying to be really rendered and controlled and precise, 
which honestly led to frustration a lot of times, I had to realize, you know what? I like loose lines. I like splatter marks. I like bold colors. I like mess. And so I had to embrace my mess. And it wasn't until I embraced my mess and went further into it that I actually unlocked some things for myself and realized I am a, quote, real artist. And it was me stopping trying to be someone that I wasn't. It was like someone gave me some clothes and said, here, put these on. And they weren't my clothes. It was like trying to fulfill a role that didn't work. And so exposing those limiting beliefs, uh, exposing those lies helped me move past and embrace and really gave me the, the lift I needed in not only starting, but continuing on this journey of creativity, uncovering what those things are is so key. You have beliefs about your creativity. You have beliefs about yourself that can be holding you back beliefs that what you create is not valuable, that maybe you aren't valuable, that the the perspective that you have, the experience that you have, um, there's no place for that in the world, that nobody wants to hear from you, nobody wants your art or what you create. Um, All those lies keep us from actually showing up to create. So the secret sauce, uh, number one, is change your limiting beliefs. Secret sauce number two is find a guide. For me, this was huge because I had seen people doing work that I admired. I had seen people showing up and creating regularly, and I needed to know who are the people that I can look to that can encourage me on this journey. The the stories that I needed to surround myself with um, to keep going. Honestly, that's why a big reason why I loved starting this podcast was because I'd get to have these conversations with creators and find out what their story was. Where did they start? What brought them to where they are today? What were the trials and tribulations they had to endure? What were the lessons they learned? And what is some of the process that they put into place so that they could be successful or achieve certain results? Um, I think it's important to find a guide in whatever way that you can. Sometimes, It's a personal connection. It's someone that you can meet with. It's someone that you know personally. Um, It's someone that, that, you know, in real life you can get together with. Other times it's not. Other times it's someone you just look to from afar. It's someone that you're observing what they do, how they do it. You're, You're investigating, you're researching that person to try to understand more about them and their work and almost reverse engineer some of the things that they've done so that you can apply it to yourself. It's important to have these guides. And sometimes they change throughout the journey because you learn all that you can from a certain person or you're in a certain season and that person takes you so far and then you find somebody else. Um, this happens a lot in, in if you take classes and you're learning different techniques and you're learning from, from various uh, teachers. Someone will take you to a certain point and then there's some handoff that happens. And that's natural um, and that's normal. But it is important that you find some guides. It is important that you surround yourself with some people, with some experiences, with some wisdom. People that you can ask questions to. Um, and understand that you're not alone in this journey. People have gone before you. Learn from them, build on what they have done, and then turn around and do the same for someone else who may be some paces behind you. So number one, secret sauce was change your beliefs. Number two, find a guide. Number three, make a plan. Now I know some of you wince when you hear that, you know, make a plan. You like to be free. I'm a free spirit, Mike. I just want to go and do what I want to do. And kind of like the wind, not really sure what's going to happen. Uh, I want to be inspired. I want to be a little wild. Great. Not saying don't do that. But what I am saying is have some kind of plan, like have some goal. 
um, you know, gaining wisdom from a guide is only helpful if you can actually put it into action. And action requires a plan. Is there a project that you want to work on? Is there an end goal in mind that you want to shoot towards? It's so much easier to figure out what that looks like and then reverse engineer some things, work backwards, figure out the steps in that plan than it is to leave things vague and just go with the flow. Because so many times you go with the flow and you know what happens? You drift. You end up places that you never intended to be and you've spent a lot of time or wasted a lot of time and you're someplace that you really didn't intend to be and now you have to work even harder perhaps to go back upstream and to course correct. And so it's so much better if you can make a plan and then figure out what are the steps? Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? My initial plan when I embarked on this 365 day uh, art making journey, it was just, I need to re-engage with art. I need to see if I can get some health. And some of it seemed pretty out of reach. Especially that first year, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And honestly, what I had to do was I had to take 365, it was too big of a number, and I had to break it down smaller. And I said, what if I did seven days of pets and 14 days of faces and, you know, 30 days of flowers or whatever the themes were, I had to give myself little projects along the way that would add up to 365 because I knew that I couldn't just be like, I'm going to show up every day and create something and I don't really know what that is. It was too big. It was too open ended. I needed more of a plan. I needed a little more structure. And then within that structure, I was free to do whatever it is that I wanted to do. So make a plan. Number one, change your beliefs, your limiting beliefs. Number two, the secret sauce is find a guide. Number three, make a plan. Secret sauce number four, work that plan. Just because you have a plan, doesn't mean that you're actually going to do anything to put it into action. So this is where you recognize your goal and you start showing up and you start working consistently. That is the magic, really. That is the secret sauce in all of the secret sauces. Consistency. It is, it is setting you in a direction. It is working the plan. It is keeping track of your successes, celebrating your wins, tracking your progress along the way that helps you and encourages you in a way that, that says keep going. Because um, you know what happens when we get a little taste of, su of success, we want it even more. We, we go, I like that. There's, you know, chemically, uh, we get a hit of dopamine in our brains and it says, yes, do more of that. So even from a brain science standpoint, it's proven when we get those successes, when we get those hits, we want more of that. And so when we're doing this tied to our creativity, it's telling us, do more. Do more of what you just did. That's awesome. Keep going. Keep going. And we need to keep growing. We need to keep working the plan so that it will propel us forward. And we'll start to close the gap on, you know, I've always wanted to create a certain body of work, or I've always wanted to write that book, or I've always wanted to fill in the blank of whatever the creative project is. You'll start to close the gap because you're taking steps, you're working the plan, you're seeing results, you're tracking, you're measuring, you're encouraging yourself, you know that things are leading someplace, and it's not just simply sitting down and, quote, creating. Uh, it has more form, it has more guidance, it has more structure, and then within that, you're free to unleash all the creativity, all the blue sky thinking, all the, the incredible things that say, I want to experiment, I want to play, I want to make things in a way that feels more me than somebody else. All that happens when you're working the plan. So secret sauce one, change your beliefs, your limiting beliefs. Secret sauce number two, find a guide. Secret sauce three, make a plan. Secret sauce four, work the plan. And finally, secret sauce five, find a place to belong.
you know, we all create in this solitary place. In our minds, we get the idea and we start to think about it. We start to maybe sketch, we start to research, we start to dream, we start to formulate a plan. And so much of this stuff happens just inside of ourselves. But there's a big, big component that will help us succeed, and that is a creative community, a place to belong so that we understand that we can get together and be with people who understand us, who get us. So much of a creative person's life is rooted in this idea of wanting to be seen and heard. Like I want to create something that helps me be seen, helps me be heard, helps me be understood, that forms a connection with somebody. And so to be in a creative community where there are people who are inspiring you because of what they're doing, they're challenging you because they're great at what they're doing and they raise the bar and perhaps you share work with them and you give feedback and you receive feedback. That's the kind of value that can be found in a creative community. We can find this whenever we're getting together with with any types of creative people, really. It doesn't even have to be the same form of creativity. But when you're with people who think differently like that, who are creative, who approach it with certain lenses, and you start bouncing ideas off each other, or you start elevating each other's ideas, there is so much magic that can happen. You'll be surprised at how much you can learn from other people, even when they're doing things that are different. And again, that's one of the reasons why I don't just have conversations on this uh, podcast with visual artists, even though that's my background. I have conversations with all types of creators because I believe that we can all learn from each other and we can be inspired by each other and we can take something from somebody's process that is a completely different endpoint from ours and we can still apply it and learn and adapt. You know, there's so much we can learn from each other if we get around each other. And that's really the key thing. We need to be willing to get around each other, to put ourselves in a creative community, to do what feels like risk in sharing our work, sharing our ideas, uh, letting other people speak into ourselves, uh, our work, our journeys. Um, There is a sense of belonging and connection, honestly, that can help you stay motivated and keep moving forward that won't happen outside the context of a community. We cannot survive on our own. We cannot survive in a vacuum. You look at all the great artists of time, all the great creators, most of them had these scenes that they came out of, right? These, these, these places where they lived, where there were fellow creators and they would get together and they would they would maybe work on things together. Um, they would speak into each other's work and make it better. They would elevate it. Um, and so it it's so important to surround ourselves with those people, to find those people who are like minded, who are on the journey with us, where we can all rise together. Now, that leads me to an exciting announcement that I have for you, which is. I am using this opportunity, my 12-year anniversary, to offer you something. I always create something for you because I want to see you win in your creativity. And so this is an invitation for you to join the brand new Daily Creative Habit membership. Now, I know there are tons of memberships out there and there are tons of programs and platforms and all the other things. I mean, I've been a part of many myself. And sometimes the hesitation is, is this really going to make a difference? Like if I'm going to put money down, if I'm going to invest time, if I'm going to put myself in proximity with other people, is this really going to move the needle? Is this really going to help me be the best creative person I can be, produce the work that I want to produce, start to get opportunities and start to monetize those things? If that's your goal, is that really going to happen? And I have created this community, this membership with that in mind, because that's been my experience. I've been a part of some, some memberships and some, um, 
places, communities that honestly, maybe they started out great and then they weren't so great. Or maybe I outgrew them or maybe, you know, it seemed like um, it was more about the person who was leading it than the people who were actually in it. Um, I, I take all those things into consideration when I thought about making this membership. And this has been a long time coming. I have thought about this and I have hesitated and I had I had contemplated how can I create something that is extremely helpful for this community. And so the Daily Creative Habit membership, if you join now, I am offering you a lifetime membership of $27 a month. It will go up May 1st, 2024 to uh, $47, which still is, is a great deal. And this this membership, this is a community where we're going to have some guided structure, you know, process things. We're obviously going to talk about the daily creative habit process and how you can work that and leverage that for whatever it is that you're creating. But we're also going to have a place where you can belong, where people can know your name, where you can contribute, where you can ask for feedback and give feedback, where it is a closed environment, meaning you pay to be a part of this. Um, people are willing to step up and be a part and do their part in this community. Um, and so, I mean, this is this is the kind of place where you could come and be yourself. You could come and contribute. Now, what does this look like practically? Well, every month... There will be a live session at the end of the month where we get on a Zoom call and we're going to talk about a specific topic and there'll be a Q&A at the end of that, all designed for you to level up your creative game. And this is a supportive community. Um, we're going to focus on some of the experiences that I've had, some of the solutions, some of the um, things that I found helpful, some of the pitfalls that I've had. All my wealth of experience over not just the past 12 years, but also over my lifetime of being a creative and a creative professional in graphic design, working in New York City and working with clients like Heineken and Mobile and Chase and, and all, all the experiences that I've had, it's all available to you in this community. Uh, there are going to be action steps for you to take, uh, for you to break down the daily creative habit process and to show some work to... Um, really engage with the community to give and take. Um, there will be some guest speakers from time to time that will come in with a certain skill set that they can help uh, shed some light on. There'll be resources and uh, some bonuses along the way. And all of this is going to happen within a private Facebook community. Uh, why Facebook? Well, it just seems to be where the majority of the people are. I've contemplated going on other platforms, but if you're anything like me, you're already in enough online ecosystems that adding one more just feels unmanageable and you probably wouldn't show up. And so I think the majority of the people already are on Facebook. We already have the free Facebook group. That's Daily Creative Habit. And certainly this is the next level. This is more of the inner circle. This is the people who are raising their hand to say, yes, I want to get serious about this. I want to see that needle move. I want to see the traction. I want to see some cash flow coming from my creativity. I want to see some life come back to my creative endeavors. I want to explore more of my creativity at a deeper level. I want to learn and grow. And I want to be a part of people who value that, who are interested in, in having that growth mindset, who are, who are helping each other on this journey. And so if that's you, again, you can sign up for $27 right now until May 1st, uh, 2024. If you go to mikebrennan.me slash membership, you can find out all the information there. There's the sign up button. Just click that and you can get enrolled right away. We're going to start May 1st. 2024. You can still join after that, but again, the price will go up to $47. Uh, I'm not trying to be the hard salesman and, and all that, um, but this is information that you need. And 
you know, I want to just leave you with this. If you've been imagining creating a certain body of work, maybe it's a portfolio for some projects that you want to do, or maybe you've been dreaming about finishing that novel, and it's been a dream for the past 10 years, and you're no closer today than you were when you first had the idea. Maybe you have been thinking about launching that podcast and sharing your voice with the world, but you've been letting limiting beliefs get in the way, and you're no closer. Maybe you're trying to figure out how to turn your passion into a profitable side hustle or career, but you're really not sure how to do that, when to do that. What does that look like? How do you do that in such a way that you don't kill the thing you love by trying to tie money to it? There could be a number of reasons why you might need this community. I want to invite you, become a part, take steps, take ownership in your own creative journey, your own self. And much like me, when I was coming out of depression and faced with this idea of a 365 day art making journey, maybe you're thinking, I don't even know what this exactly looks like. I'm not even sure where this needs to go, but I know I need to do something different. I know I need to take a chance because what I've been doing hasn't been working and I've been alone and I can't continue like this because it's not going to go anywhere. Maybe it's affecting your mental health. Maybe it's affecting your ability to create in such a way where you feel value and and pride in what it is that you create. Or maybe it's, again, tying money to it so that you, because you want to create things that you can sell. I don't know what your motivation is, what your reasoning is, but I do know this about you. You're not meant to do this creative journey alone. This is the invitation right now, today. If any of the stuff that I've been saying has been resonating, pay attention to that. If you have taken any value to the Creative Chats podcast over time, or you've been connected with me through various social media platforms or or any other forum that I show up in, if you've learned from me, if you've said, you know what, Mike, there's something about your journey that really speaks to me, I would be honored to be one of your guides for this part of your journey. This is how you do it. Again, the link is mikebrennan.me backslash membership. I'll put it in the show notes. Go there. Click the join button. $27 a month. Be a part of this membership. I cannot wait to see you in there because I truly believe, I say this all the time, when you create, we all win. I want to see what you're going to create. I want to see what your next 12 years produces. Join us today. I can't wait to see you in there. Can't wait to have you part of this community. And today, go create something. Thanks for listening today. I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe leave a rating and a review. It really helps this podcast be seen and heard by others.